Okay, so flamingo kit. I got this one a while ago um, and hadn't started it yet. So this is petals. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna make this. So we start with pink yarn and uh, how is this wrapped? Do you wrap around the outside? Yes, we don't want the one that wraps around the outside right now because we don't. We want the one from the inside because it's easier. So let's tuck that under something and then feel around inside here and see if we can't find the other end. Now with these, ah, ha, ha, we found a good job. Um, we're going to start slow with this kit. Um, and then as we go along, we'll get a little faster. So we are starting with an adjustable loop or a magic circle. Um, and this is how we do that. So take your yarn. Let me get, see if this helps visually for this part. Okay. So take your yarn and bring it over your fingers so that this tail's hanging down, okay? This part we're gonna call our tail and this part on the other side we're gonna call our working yarn. So the tail, okay, you wanna bring it over your fingers, wrap it around, okay, like this. Trying to make sure you can see everything that I'm doing. I do have a separate video where I go over this, but it's, it's simpler than it seems. You're just wrapping around like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold this piece here with this thumb and I'm going to go under this part of my tail that I'm holding grab this working yarn that's loose over here and pull it under and I rotate my hook like this okay so I can do that one more time so I'm going under this part of the tail that I'm holding grabbing that loose working yarn bringing it under and rotating and then grabbing this bottom everything that I'm holding with this thumb I'm now just switching to the other thumb grabbing my working yarn holding it up and then grabbing the loop between pinching it between down here just so I can get one chain in so Press back against that working yarn, rotate your hook to grab it, pull that through the loop on your hook to chain. And then I'm gonna let go and let this rotate back the other way. So this was facing this way when I was holding it, it was twisted with the two strands on this side and one strand on this side. I'm gonna let it go, let it go back the other way. And then there's that. I'll do it. Um, one more time, I know a lot of people have struggles with this. I'm gonna do this a little more smoothly so that you can, so I'm just bringing it around, pinching the tail, under the tail, grab the working yarn, I rotate my hook, switch to pinching here, get into position to do one chain to lock it and then let it go. And now we have our adjustable loop here. Now, a thing that I've started doing because it makes things easier later is my very first stitch. Um, I'm, I pull the hook up a little to make this loop bigger because working into, working into that stitch later is sometimes a pain. So, Hopefully your adjustable loop is adjusty and we're gonna move on. So we're going to work our stitches that we're going to do 
into this loop in general. So that's where we're going to be working. Um, we have already chained one to close the loop and it says to chain two. Let me see what its instructions say. Okay. So we are going to chain one more. So now for this, I hold just this loop and the, the tail here while I work on this. And usually I end up holding the little knot area for chaining and stuff. So we have one chain. We're going to do another chain because it says to chain two. So I'm going to press back against that, rotate, pull that through the loop on my hook. Now I have two chains. This is the loop on my hook. We don't count that when we count chains. This V is a chain and this is a chain here. And we are going to do six single crochet in the loop. Oh, uh, you need a stitch marker. I got these guys. You know what, let's go with green. Now, if you're a beginner, you can, if you like, mark your first stitch you're about to do uh, so you know it when you come back to it. I don't do that, but um, if it's easier for you, certainly go ahead. So we're gonna do six single crochet in the loop. So I'm gonna make sure I'm going under this tail and through this loop. So into the loop and then I'm going to do a single crochet. So I'm going to grab this working yarn and pull it up so that I have two loops on my hook. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook like so. And then I'm going to tighten that down a little because that was a little loose. So this is one single crochet. And here is how you, what it looks like from the top, how you count that. This little V right here, this loop and this loop is the top of one single crochet. This sideways twisty looking thing is the top of our chain. So that's one, we're gonna do it again. So insert under both the tail and through the loop, grab the yarn, pull it up, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops, like so. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And I'm tightening these down a little as I go. I feel like I'm doing these really loose for some reason. So now from the beginning here, this twisty thing, like I said, is our chain. And then we have one, the top of one single crochet stitch, two, three, four, and five. So we'll do one more and that'll be six single crochet in the loop. Now we're gonna pull the loop closed. We got our six single crochet. So I'm gonna take this tail and I'm gonna pull it as tight as it'll let me. Now later, once we get a little bit more crocheted around, we'll secure this end because otherwise it can loosen itself back up like so. So for now, we're gonna do that and we're gonna move on to the next round we're not joining we're working in continuous rounds which means we need a stitch marker to keep track of where our row is so for me um i know where my stitch is because i can recognize my chain stitch versus my first single crochet but just in case you can't because that takes some time you can always count back if you didn't mark that first stitch you did so again this is the loop on our hook 
We don't count that. But we're going to count each of these Bs as we go around. So this is two, four, six. So this one here is the first single crochet we made because we made six. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do two single crochet in each stitch around in this in this row. So I'm going to insert under that. And this is why, which I did it um, for the chain, but I do it for the first single crochet now. Um, I make it a little bit bigger because if not, it's pretty hard to get that hook under there. So I've insert under both loops of the top of that single crochet. Not just one, it'll look different if you do that. Then yarn over and pull up a loop. So pull it under those two loops. And now you got two loops on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through both of those loops. Now I'm going to take my stitch marker and place it in the first stitch of the round there. If it makes more sense to you, you can put it in the last stitch of a round and just keep track of it that way. I just prefer the first. So that's one single crochet in this stitch, but we're doing two in each stitch around. So I need to go back under the same loops. So this loop and this loop here, and you can see this loop here shows that we already worked into this. We're gonna do it again. So back under the same two loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops, that's two. So this is an increase and we're going to do that in every stitch around. So this here is the edge of the stitch we just worked. Here's our next stitch right here. So insert under that under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. And then again into the same spot, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over pull through both loops on the hook i'm still tightening down a little this hook is very flexy okay continuing on so here's our next stitch to work into we're going to do two single crochet in here one two our next stitch here in there. Here's our next stitch. We will put two in here. Okay, and last stitch of the round. We'll put two in here. When you're working in the round, you work all the way up to the stitch now, if you're marking your last stitch, then then the, the last, the one with your stitch marker is the one you put your last two of the rounds in. But in this case, since I'm putting it in the first, I work all the way around back to there. There's no chain, um, um, there's no join and chain to worry about. So we'll do a count real quick. So this is our first one here, our first single crochet. Two, four, six. 8, 10, 12. Now when you start out doing this, you can see how these look more kind of like they're lying on top than they are on the outside here. Just be aware of that. Like I don't want to work into this and this back here. This isn't, these aren't my two loops. When you start out, a lot of times they're kind of sitting up on the top here like this instead of being on the side. So I guess we can tighten this down now to um, secure this end. I'm gonna get a really big loop so that I don't, so that I can get my hook out of the way. Tighten this as much as it'll let me and then get the needle that came with the kit. 
Here's our needle and safety eyes. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tie this down. So I'm gonna thread this onto the needle. And then, stop that. I'm gonna go under a nearby stitch. So right now, before I do this, this part facing us that we were working on the opposite side of where our tail is sticking out from this is our right side this is the side that's going to be on the outside of the work this is the side that's going to be on the inside now there is you can kind of recognize the difference after a while um but if you think that will confuse you or or in any way be an annoyance to remember you can put a stitch marker or something on, on your wrong side or your right side so that you know which is which. Um, for now, we'll have our tail telling us which side it is as well. So I'm not going to weave this in or anything. I'm just going to go under a nearby loop with the needle. And then as I pull this needle through, I'm going to hold this part of the thread so that I can't pull it all the way flat because I tend to do that. I'm gonna go through that loop just to tie it down. We're gonna weave this in a little bit. So I knotted that and now I'm just gonna go through a couple of spots. Just to secure this end a little bit so that it doesn't do anything it isn't supposed to do. Kind of like that and then I'm just gonna let it hang now our next row has us doing instructions in brackets and then repeating that around the outside of the work so our instruction is to do two single crochet in the next single crochet then single crochet in the next two single crochet and repeat that around it's easier than it sounds so in this first stitch we're putting two single crochet so an increase and then in the next we're doing one single crochet and then one single crochet so single crochet in the next two and then in the next start over again at the beginning of the brackets two single crochet in this one and then one single crochet one single crochet and then repeat again so usually for these ones where it repeats the instructions after I show that the first time, the rest of the times I just do the first set and then do the repeats um, off camera. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker because our next stitch is the one that is the beginning. And I'm going to do the first single crochet of the two single crochet that go in here. So again, I'm going to make sure I get both loops of this stitch here under both of them yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook to complete that single crochet and then right away I'll put my stitch marker back in the stitch I just made this is now the first stitch of my round so I can keep track and now I'm going to go back into the same spot I just did and I want to be careful because sometimes it's hard to find the edge of that stitch and make sure I'm going into the same spot. So do my second single crochet like so. Okay. Now in the next here, we're going to do one. Why don't you want to go through? So one single crochet here and then in the next here one single crochet here so that was two single crochet in the first stitch and then one single crochet in each of the next two so now we repeat in our next stitch here we do two so one 
two. And you can figure out however you want to count this to keep track. I'm probably going to do this in one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four around. So we got our two in there. And then one, in this one, and one in this one, and then repeat again. So one in the same stitch again, two, and then three, one in the next, and four, one the next. You can also count like increase and then one, two, however you want to do it. So we're at our last set here. So I'm going to do this increase. So two stitches in this spot. One, two, and then three, and four. Okay. Now a thing of interest is being able to recognize your increases versus your regular single crochets. Regular single crochet has two loops around the bar, the bars in there, the top of the single crochet that we worked before. Two loops. An increase has four. One, two, three, four. And they make a slightly bigger opening, which you probably can't even really see that, but it's slightly bigger, slightly more visible, this little arch. So this is just a single crochet. This is an increase. Single crochet, single crochet, increase. And it's helpful to be able to recognize those and know those intervals um, as you go, especially for counting or if you think you lost your place. Sometimes it helps because you can count from your last increase instead of having to start at the beginning of the row. Uh, next, two single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next three. This is pretty common to just step up what you were just doing. Um, so it's going to be really similar, just with one more separate single crochet. So take out the stitch marker. In this stitch here, we're going to do two like we just did. So one, two, working in the same stitch for both of those. Oh, I need to put my stitch marker back in my first single crochet there, not my second. And then we are going to single crochet in the next three. So single crochet in the next stitch here. Here's our next one. This is next single crochet. And then our next one right here. Okay, so that's our increase. Both of these are in the one stitch, increase, and then one, two, three. Now, you'll just continue that around. Increase, one, two, three. Increase, one, two, three. Increase, one, two, three. All the way around, and I will do that and be back. Okay, this is what we look like at the end of that round. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's that. So, uh, Moving on, we're stepping it up again. So two single crochet in the next single crochet in the next four and repeat that around. Remove the stitch marker. Two single crochet here. But after my first one, I'm going to remember to put my stitch marker back. So that's one. And you wanna make sure as much as you can that you have even tension that your stitches are the same size if they're looking ones looking bigger or smaller or whatever um like okay so that was one let's see 
This is just for demonstrating purposes. So right now I'm pulling this pretty hard. Um, I'm holding everything really tightly right now. And so I'm going to pull this through and pull that really tight. Okay. And now I'm going to do one where I'm being pretty loose, where you, there's not a lot of tension here. Just ignore the fact that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Okay. So here, this is pretty big, the height of this, right? And then here it's pretty small. So this one you can see is about this tall. My normal one is slightly bigger than this one, uh, smaller than this one. You want to try to have them be about the same size. So if you're noticing that you do one and you, your hands get tired or whatever and you, ma you make one a little big, um, you can take it out just take your hook out and then slowly so that you don't lose track of what you're doing just pull this until that comes that stitch comes out right and then this is the loop you would put your hook back through here but we're going to take out this one too so I'm just going to pull until that comes loose make this hook a little bigger so I can get our loop so I can get my hook back through and that's you want to try to make sure you're having a similar tension here the resistance with which you're holding this in your hand also don't curl your pinky um like don't do this because that'll end up hurting your pinky eventually so try to keep your other hand straight anyways um Right, single crochet in the first two, single crochet in the next four. So, or two single crochet in the next single crochet. Yes, so anyways, now that that demonstration is over, we've done our first single crochet, and now I'm going to insert into the same spot, do a second single crochet for this increase. So one, two, and then three, four, five, six. You could also count one, two, and then one, two, three, four. I do it both ways, honestly, sometimes. And then repeat that around until we get to the last stitch of before a stitch marker. And I'll be back. Okay, here we are at the end of that round. Uh, that was round five. Oh, hey, counting rounds. That's another thing that's important to know. Can you tell I haven't done one of these in a while? Uh, so when you're working continuously in the round like this, each of these like concentric circles of a sort well, they're not quite concentric, they're a spiral, um, is around. So like this center one right in here is one round. And then this here represents our second, third, fourth, fifth round. So that's basically how you count the rounds in this. Um, if you count at the place where the join is well it's not a join but the new row starts it can get a little bit like confusing because it doesn't look exactly the same um so i usually just turn it so that that's off to the side and one two three four five. Oh man why have i done this all right what was i doing one two that's an increase so i just need four single crochet what was I even doing? One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, now we just step it up again. Two single crochet and then single crochet in the next five. So take out my stitch marker. Put two single crochet in this first one here. But after the first one, I'm going to put my stitch marker back so that I do not forget. One. 
two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. So increase and then one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so repeat that around and I'll be back. Okay, so here we are at the end of that round. And um, our next two rounds are going to be single crochet around. So we're just putting one single crochet in each stitch around. I'll do the first one, but not the second one to show you. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I like to demonstrate it once. So, I'm going to take out my stitch marker, one single crochet in this first one here, put my stitch marker back, and then just continue around with one single crochet in each stitch. Now, a thing that can happen sometimes is you can kind of split your loop or have part of a thread still in your hook that doesn't want to be there. Um, if all of a sudden it feels like it's really hard to move the hook or it feels really tight, um, oh, like now, it could be because like I'm pulling and it doesn't want to come up. There's a loop on there that that belongs to a different loop so you won't be able to see this I'm pretty sure but you can usually find it and is that it there get it off the hook oh I see it now so I'm going to take my hook out and pull the loop up to get it past the spot where the little piece of the other loop was. Put it back in. Let me show, I'll do it more intentionally. So like if I'm coming through here, I can grab part of this loop like that and split it. So now it's on my hook here. And it doesn't want to be. Now, if it's visible and big like this, you can a lot of times just tuck under um, like that. But sometimes you have to, like I just did, take your hook out, pull the loop up, find out where the spot is. And the yarn in these types of kits, you know, it's not an expensive yarn. So it's usually more prone to splitting and fraying and not as smooth. So we just continue all the way around, one single crochet in each stitch. until we're back to our stitch marker. So I'll do the same thing for the next round. Hey, get off of there. For the next round and be back after that. Okay, so here we are at the end of round eight. And the next couple rounds, we're going to basically just get smaller again. So we're gonna do kind of the same intervals that we just did but instead of increasing we're decreasing so we're going to single crochet two together and then do five single crochet for one round and then the next round is going to be single crochet two together and then four we're we're doing the opposite of what we just did now there's more than one way to do the decrease um previously I've just stuck with the traditional way but I do like the other way better I'm going to demonstrate both. Um, so I'm going to take my stitch marker out. Now the traditional one 
is you're going to insert like you're starting your single crochet. So insert under the next stitch here, pull up a loop, okay, but don't finish the single crochet. And then find the next stitch, insert there, under there, pull up a loop so that you have three loops on your hook like this and then yarn over and pull through all three. Now, this is has a more visible uh, look from the outside. So let me do a single crochet here in the next one so that you can see what I mean. So here are our normal single crochets here. We have these two loops, right? This has kind of a more horizontal slightly diagonal bar that's more recognizable for doing a decrease. So for a beginner, you might want to continue doing it that way because it's easier to spot. So again, you insert under the first yarn over, pull up a loop, insert under the second stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. So that's an option. Um, another way to do it, which I like because of how it looks, uh, I think they call it the invisible decrease, is instead of going under both loops here and doing the whole pull up a loop thing, you just slip your hook under this first loop and then under the second the, the, the first loop of the next stitch in the line without any yarn overs. I didn't get all of that loop on there. Get, get on my hook, rest of you. Okay, whatever. And then you pull through both of those and then finish that. Now this is much less visible and you pretty much have to find it from this side to find the loops that you didn't work. So for a beginner, it would be hard to spot this, but it, it looks more even from the outside. So you can choose which one you're gonna do. Um, let me do that one again. So again, it's just slipping under the front loop only, which is the loop closest to you of the one stitch, and then the front loop only of the next stitch in the row, then grabbing your working yarn, pulling it through both of those loops, and then finishing off that single crochet like that. It's harder to keep track of this way because it's not as visible of a thing, but it has a better finish. So those are two options for doing your decreases. Now I'm gonna put my stitch marker in here. So that was a decrease. And then we're gonna do five single crochet. Now, when you do a decrease, no matter which method you use, your entire stitch is kind of slanted off this way. So it can make it harder to spot where your next single crochet is because you have a decent amount of loop here and it looks like that might be where you would work. But over here, right here, this is our next stitch in the line and it's gonna be a little bit of a reach because we're, we're decreasing, we're taking away a stitch. So we're gonna do a single crochet here and we're doing what, five. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And now a decrease. So I'll do it the traditional way. So I'm gonna insert under both loops, pull up a loop, insert under the next stitch, both loops, pull up a loop, <clears throat> three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And now you can why is that being difficult? You can see how it kind of looks like there's a stitch here to work, right? But these loops 
go around those bars. So we're kind of reaching over here to this stitch for the next one. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now you can see Here we have a traditional decrease. And this one over here is like the invisible decrease. It definitely has a smoother, like it blends in more smoothly to do this kind, but it also makes it harder to spot and count. So that's kind of up to you which one you wanna do. Um. And we're just going to repeat this around, doing a decrease and then five single crochet around to the end of the row, and I'll be back. Okay, so here's the end of that round. I did this one with the invisible decrease, and um, I know some people might think it's just confusing to have options like this, but it's kind of just a nicer finish if you if you want to try it but the only way really to be able to spot your decreases now is from the inside and it's just more difficult so here see we have these two loops that aren't worked you know that's where our decrease is so this would be one right here here's these two that aren't worked so counting the intervals there we would start here with the first one after that because this single crochet takes up both of these old single crochets. So then one, two, three, four, five, and then we would have another. I'll do the next one with the traditional decrease. Um, I don't want to make it more complicated, but it is a nice option and I do it now in other projects that I do that aren't that I'm not recording. Um, I use the in, uh, invisible one now. So the next round, we're gonna single crochet two together and single crochet in the next four. So I take out my stitch marker. I'm gonna insert under both loops. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert under both loops of the next stitch in the round. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through all three put that stitch marker back and then we are single crochet four so here's my next stitch to work into so one two three four and then again insert pull up a loop insert in the next pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three loops and then find your next stitch one two three four and repeat that around and I'll be back okay so that rounds over and you can see our decreases here and that's the difference in those two you can use whichever one is easier for you and the next round we're going to again single crochet two together but then we're going to single crochet in the next three so i'm gonna do my first decrease right here Oh, I caught a loop there. It does not want to get off. Let's try that again. So 
so stitch marker in and then this is three single crochet around so I'm gonna find my next single crochet reach over one two three now when the work starts to get smaller like this you do have to reach more for your stitches I'm gonna decrease And I tend to tuck the other edge of the circle down as I go around so that as it gets smaller I don't work into both sides so reach over here for one two three kind of like so so that I only have this one layer to go through um, because if you catch just a little loop or something off of another side it's kind of annoying to deal with decrease one two and making sure you keep that other side down gets more important as the work gets smaller around and now our last set of this one one two for a decrease and then one two three okay and the next round is single crochet two together and now single crochet in the next six which is a deviation from our just kind of stepping it down one each time so I'm gonna take my stitch marker out we're gonna single crochet two together let me in here this one can be kind of annoying for this but I do really like how it's less noticeable in the finished work First one done, stitch marker in, and then single crochet in the next six. So I'll find my next stitch here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then another decrease. Also, I find these to be easier with a metal hook or like a hook that isn't a flexi plastic one. There's my decrease. And then single crochet in the next six. One, two, three. four, five, six. Okay. Now, 13 through 18, single crochet in each um, stitch around, which I've already demonstrated earlier. Um, I would recommend writing your rows down um, or adding a stitch marker each time and not taking the previous one out to keep track of your rows so then you can count your stitch markers um, or just write down 13 14 15 you know all the way through 18 and mark them off as you go um, I mean you can always count from the beginning but it gets kind of annoying so just single crochet in each stitch around make sure you move your stitch marker or add a new stitch marker every time so you don't lose lose track of your rounds and then I will be back after the 18th round okay here we are at the end of 18 and 
we're just gonna fasten off and leave a tail for sewing so we're gonna slip stitch to this next stitch right here I'm just gonna insert pull up a loop pull that loop through the loop on my hook and uh, estimate a tail for sewing on I'm just uh, trim this so that is the body there and now the head we're gonna start the same way um with the adjustable loop or the magic ring and actually let's see are these literally identical two single crochet each stitch around two single crochet four times okay so for round five these are identical so um i'm just gonna go ahead and start the head and go through round five and you can refer back to the part for the body if you need to because it is the same so i will do that and be back okay so this is through round five um now here we're going to two single crochet in the next and then single crochet in the next seven and repeat that around so we'll do our two single crochet in the same stitch oh i gotta put my stitch marker back stitch markers are important and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and repeat that around. Okay, so here's the end of that row. And now we just step it up again. So two single crochet and then eight. So one, two in the first stitch marker. And then eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and repeat that around. Okay, now we're doing our increase and then jumping up to 14 so one two for our increase and then one two three four is a long one um and this one we're not repeating as many times obviously because there's less we're only doing it twice um i might as well just do this and then start the next one so one two and then one two three 
Oh yeah, so when you're doing these, with these intervals where you have something in the brackets that you're repeating, unless they say otherwise, you should end the round with whatever's at the end of the brackets. And usually if that works out, your stitch count will be fine. But say like this starts with the increase and ends with the 14. Say that at the end you did 14 and there was like one stitch left. That's an indicator that something didn't go quite right in that row because you could you should unless they say otherwise you should end on whatever is at the end of the brackets. And the next one is two single crochet and then 15. And then after this one, we'll start our decreases, which is always fun. So there's our first one in that stitch. And here's our second one for this increase. And then 15. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I'll do that again and be back for the next round. Okay, so here's the end of, where were we? Nine, round nine. Um, and now we're gonna start our decreases. So you can do the decrease however you like. I'm gonna continue doing just the front loop only method. And now we're just walking it back down so there's my first decrease and then single crochet in the next 15 and then decrease again one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then we'll decrease and do fifteen more, and um, I'll be back after that. Okay, now decrease and then 14. Stitch marker back. Five, decrease one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Six. Okay, that should be fourteen. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So I will repeat that and then we'll move on to twelve. Alrighty. Decrease and then the next eight. Hmm. Did I split that? Yes, I did. 
Get back on my hook where you belong. There's a decrease. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're back to doing repeating this three times around instead of two. So finish that around, and I'll be back. Okay, so here we are. And next we got single crochet two together and single crochet in the next seven. marker four five six seven okay repeat that around and I'll be back. Alrighty. We got three rows left, looks like. So, decrease. And then single crochet in the next four. And repeat that around. So, one two, three, four, and we're, we're repeating this one four times instead of three times, but just keep uh, repeating it around so you get to the end and I'll be back. Okay. Now decrease and then single crochet in the next three. And this one again we're repeating four times around so one two three repeat that around and I'll be back okay and now 16 is just gonna be decrease and then single crochet in the next two and I'll just do this whole one since I'm here anyway one two decrease one two Decrease one, two, and our last set decrease one, two. Okay. Now, it told us to leave a tail for sewing on the body. I don't think we also need one on the head, but it says to leave one, so we're gonna do it just in case. So I'm gonna slip stitch to the next stitch here, pull up a loop, pull that through the loop on my hook, tighten it down, and then just estimate a tail. Trim this. And there we are. So here's the head, here's the body. Now next we have wings. So we'll uh, get started on those. 
Okay, so wings. I'm gonna make two of these the same way, so I'll only demonstrate one. I'm gonna start with an adjustable loop again. Uh, so I'm gonna bring my yarn around my fingers, hold the tail, go under the tail, grab the working yarn, bring it under and rotate, pinch the bottoms of the loop, chain one to secure, and then let it rotate back. Um, so we chained one and now I'm gonna do six single crochet in the loop. So I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. Instead of having it tight down like this, I'm gonna lift it up a little to make that single crochet easier to work into later. And then put six single crochet into here. So enter into the loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook for one, Again for two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to close this loop up pull it tight. I'll secure that edge later. And now for the second round, two single crochet in the next and then single crochet in the next. Repeat that around. So I'm going to go under our first single crochet here. You can count back one, two, three, four, five, six. If you're not sure where it is, I'm going to go under both loops here. Do a single crochet. and put my stitch marker in, which I lost track of. There it is. Okay. Okay, so we need two single crochet in this one. So there's one back into the same spot for two, and then one in the next. Then repeat that, so two in the next here, one, two, and then one in the next, and repeat again. So in the next here we'll put two, one, two, and then one in the last here. For the next round, we're gonna do two single crochet in the next and then single crochet in the next two. So I'll take out my stitch marker, do my first single crochet in the stitch here. Put my stitch marker back. Second single crochet into the same stitch. So that's two in the first and then one in the next. And one in the next one after that. And repeat that around. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna tighten this, pull it tight, and tie this end down. Like I did earlier, same way. Although I don't feel like weaving this in right now, so just gonna let it hang. It'll be fine. Okay, and now we're stepping it up again. So two single crochet and then single crochet in the next three. So 
here in the first stitch of the round that I just took my stitch marker out of. We'll put one of our first two single crochets. Stitch marker back in. One, two. And then one. Two, three, and then here in the next, we'll start over again. One, two, one, two, three. And one more time, starting in the next stitch. One, two in that one. And then one. Two, three. Okay, so next round, we're gonna start off with a single crochet two together. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna continue doing the invisible method. Grab the first, the closest loop to me of both of those next single crochet and complete a single crochet through them. And then single crochet in the next five, which our next stitch to work into is right here, not this right here. So we're gonna reach over one, two, three, four, five, yeah. and then single crochet two together again. So the this loop here and this loop here, I'm just gonna grab that, grab that, pull my loop through both of those for my decrease, and then single crochet in the next six. So reach over to that one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Our next round, we're gonna start again with a single crochet two together. my stitch marker back and then single crochet in the next four so one two three four and then again we're gonna single crochet the next two together. Like that. And single crochet in the next five. Two, three, four, five. And a round of single crochet in each stitch around. Okay. I'm folding the other side of this down so that I don't catch any of the threads with my hook. split that loop and I don't feel like fixing it. Okay. Back out, back under. There we go. 
Alrighty. Now, so we're going to fold in half. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out because we don't need it now. And I'm going to fold in half. So this little corner right here is the one that I just worked into. That's what these loops show me. So this is my first stitch and I'm going to line that up with the last one I just did. So this here. I'm going to fold it in half and then we're going to work through both loops um, of these stitches here. And the first thing we're going to do is a slip stitch. So I'm going to go through both loops of this stitch and then both loops of this back here. And then do a slip stitch. So I'm going to grab this yarn, pull it through like so. And then I'm going to chain four. So oh, that loop's kind of big. I'm going to make that loop smaller. I'm going to tighten this down first so that that loop isn't so big. Now, chain four. So yarn over, pull the loop through the loop on your hook. One, two, three, four. Single crochet in the second chain. So this is the loop on our hook. This is the first chain from our hook here. This is the second chain from our hook right here. So this is where we're going to put our single crochet. So I'm going to go in here, do a single crochet, and in the next two. So here's the edge of the loop that we just worked into. Okay, so now we're gonna go into this one here and then this is our next one. So I'm gonna go into here. Okay, and now into here. And now we're going to slip stitch through both loops of the next stitch. So we already worked through this one right here. There's our loop going through it. Now we got this one and this one. So I'm gonna work under both of those, pull up a loop, tighten that down. And now we are going to do that again. So one, two, three, four chains, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, which I'll, again, that's not this one up here or the loop, that's this one, the second one right here, single crochet, and then in the next two, so one here and one there, Okay, and then slip stitch through the next two. Mm, I caught a loop. There we go. Okay. And repeat. So chain one, two, three, four, and then single crochet one, two, three, then slip stitch, and one more, one, two, three, four, and then single crochet, one, Two, three, and then right here in these last two, slip stitch. Okay, now I'm going to just do a quick slip stitch right here, tighten it down good to secure that end, 
and then guesstimate a tail for sewing. And that's the link. So make another of these and we'll move on to the legs. So we're also going to make two of these. And we're working with the tan now, color B. See if we can find the end. Ha ha ha. Alrighty. So, adjustable loop again. Just gonna trim the end of that for being really frayed. I'm gonna be going a little faster now since we've already demonstrated it a couple times. Okay. So I'm gonna loosen this up. Again, we're gonna do six single crochet in the loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, tighten that loop up. And now our next round is going to be two single crochet in the next and single crochet in the next two. So you can count back if you need to, to find your first single crochet there. I'm going to put my single crochet in, put my stitch marker in. That's one in this stitch. We're doing two in this stitch. So I'm going back into the same spot for the second single crochet. And then one single crochet in the next two. So one, two. Okay. And then the next over here, we'll put two. And then in the next two, We'll put one each. One, two. Okay, so uh, 13 through 14 for every round, you're gonna do single crochet in each stitch around, which goes like this. Take out your stitch marker, do your first single crochet. Hold on, I just noticed there's a loop there that goes like that. Okay, do your first single crochet. Stitch marker back. single crochet in each stitch around. Now this is going to cup towards you at first. Um, we'll just curl it back the other way. But before we get too far down, because this is going to be kind of like a tube, before we get too far down, you want to tie your end off inside so it doesn't come loose. Make sure you're finding the right two loops there. It's kind of difficult when it's curled like that. Now before this is... built up too much, I'm going to tie this off inside. Okay, now I'm going to curl this the other way. So that the right side is facing out like that. And usually what I do is just shove the tail down in there as I go. Sometimes I trim it if it's being really annoying. Okay, so now make sure you're moving your stitch marker each time. And it'll just be one single crochet in each stitch around here through 14. So I'll be back. Okay, so this is after 14. Now we're going to start increasing again. So two single crochet in the next and then single crochet in the next three. So I'm going to put a single crochet in my first stitch here. Put my stitch marker back. 
put my second single crochet in there and then single crochet in the next three so one two three and then repeat so two single crochet and then one Oops. two three and we're just going to keep stepping up so two in the first here it's one two and then single crochet in the next four one two three four two in the next one one two three This color is definitely slipperier than the pink color. Okay. I'll step up again. So again, two single crochet in the first one. There's two, and then single crochet in the next five. Four, five, and repeat that around. Okay, and the next one is Two in the first, then one in the next six, and repeat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, repeat around. Now seven. Oh, went in the wrong spot there. My finger now called, sorry. What was I on six? I think that was six. All right, you're just unhappy, aren't you? So increase one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I should probably trim my nails so they stop catching pieces of thread. I'll repeat that around. Okay. Our last round before moving on to the feet. So we're doing two and then eight and repeating. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we're gonna do something similar to what we did with the wing. So we're gonna match these up. I'll put the edge of this stitch that I just worked through here on the edge, match up my first stitch of the round with my last stitch, and I'm gonna chain one and then half double crochet which I don't think we've done in this kit yet. So you're going to yarn over like this before you insert your hook and then go ahead and insert your hook through this front stitch and then through the back stitch as well. And then yarn over again, pull a loop through those two stitches and now you have three loops on your hook. So yarn over pull through all three and we're going to do another half double crochet in the next set of two single crochet as well so we just worked into here now we're going to work into here so yarn over insert under both of those pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three And then we are going to slip stitch in the next. So right here, go under both of these, slip stitch. Tighten that down. And now half double in the next three. So yarn over, insert under this, these next two here. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. And the next two here, yarn over, Insert under both of those, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. One more time here. And then again, slip stitch in the next. And then we are going to do two more half doubles in the next two. So here and here, through both layers there. Like that. And single crochet, or um, slip stitch, sorry, in the last here. And now it says leave a tail to make a long stitch between the toes. So I guess we're gonna do some shaping later. And I'm going to leave a decent tail and trim. So make your second one of those. And then we just have the beak. So we are starting with color D, so the black. And then switching to C, the white. So here are these colors. And see if we can get this untied. We are going to chain two. Okay. We are, I think, our first time making a slip knot for this project. Alrighty, so slip knot. Grab the tail of your yarn, bring it around your thumb, pinch that tail between those fingers, bring the loop over, pull 
pull tight. Put that on your hook. I guess that's the first time we did it, so I'll do it again just in case. So I bring that around, pinch that over there. Bring this loop over. I'll tighten that down a little now. Darker yarns are harder to see, so I'll try to make sure this is more visible. So we're gonna chain two, so yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook one, again for two, then three single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So here's the loop on our hook, here's the first chain. It's the second chain, so we're gonna insert into there, do a single crochet, one, back into the same spot, for two, back into the same spot again, for three. Now, here is my first single crochet, second single crochet, third single crochet, which is technically the first. So this is the first stitch of a round. I'm gonna slip my hook under here and then the next round wants two single crochet in the first one. So I'm gonna do this single crochet and then put in my stitch marker. So this is my first one. I wonder... if this will help. Okay. Yeah, so there's one. Now going back into the same spot which here's my loop of what I just worked around there. So that's two and then single crochet in the next two. All right. So this is the edge of what I just worked here. This one sticking up is the edge of my next stitch, but the other loop of it is inside here, right there. So I'm going to untuck this a little get under both of those and this will straighten up and look a little bit more organized in a second okay and then we're going to do the same thing for the next one so this is again the edge of what i just worked into there's my loop going around this so this is the top of the next one and again that other half of it is like hiding inside here so I'm gonna turn this up a little. There's one loop and there's the second. So I'm gonna get under both of those. Do this single crochet. And now we're back to our first stitch. Now, a lot of times doing this with the chain two leaves a little bit of an opening. For now, we're just gonna leave the tail. We might do something with it in a little bit to tighten that up. Okay, so the next one we want two single crochet in the next again. So here are the two loops of this stitch. This time I'm gonna actually put my hook under them first before I take the stitch marker out. So So small. Okay, there's the first loop. I was trying to make it visible. There. There's the second. So now I'm going to take my stitch marker out, complete this single crochet, stitch marker back in. And a second single crochet into the same spot, the same opening that we just used. And now single crochet in the next three. So now here's the top of this one. And I know this other loop is down here. So I can do like I was doing and kind of turn this to find it. Um, but what I usually do is I just go down and then work my way up.
and a lot of times I can catch both. Although with dark yarn, it is really hard to tell, but I think I, ha I have both this time. So that's one. And now I need to move over to this one. See, there's two on there. Two. Although if that is difficult or confusing, you might want to keep folding this out a little to find the other loop and make sure you're under both. Three. And once this gets a little bit of size to it, I will turn it so that right side is right side out like this. It's hard to do it initially, but that makes things a lot easier once you get it started a little. Like that. And now I'm gonna, now with the magic circles, we had to secure those ends. Um, because they weren't tied. These are tied. You can still weave them in with small pieces like this. A lot of time I just shove them in here and let them live in there. Like that. Okay. Now we should be able to see a little bit better. Okay, so round four, we're gonna do two single crochet in the next single crochet and then single crochet in the next single crochet and repeat that. So I'm gonna get under this first stitch right here, both loops, take out my stitch marker and complete this single crochet. One, put that back. And then I'm gonna go back into the same opening, the same spot for two and then here is our next stitch so I'm going to put one in there and then in the next one here I'm going to put one, two, and in the next one here, one. So now it wants us to fasten this color off and join the next one, which is the white. Okay, so this looks a mess because I was going to do a different color change method, but then I realized it doesn't actually want you to. So where we are right now is we're right here about to finish this last single crochet um, in round four and then fastening off. So um, I've done the two single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, and then two single crochet in the next. And this is finishing the last single crochet. This won't work every stitch of the previous row, uh, which is fine. But uh, the way I was gonna do it, it just is. It does. It didn't want to be done that way. So we're just gonna do this with fastening off. So I'm just gonna finish this single crochet real quick with my tiny bit of yarn here, and then. To fasten off. Now my stitch marker would be, let me get it and put it back. Where do we think I've left it? I will find. Okay, so stitch marker here and last single crochet here and then there's a stitch in between because we only had, um, because we have five single crochet from round three and in this round we're only working into four because we're doing two single crochet in the next single crochet, single crochet in the next single crochet, two single crochet in the next single crochet, single crochet in the next single crochet. So we're fastening off into this last stitch before the uh, change. So I'm just gonna slip stitch. I'll have a little tiny tail here and that's fine. 
yours will be longer, I'm sure. So I'm just going to, to fasten off this color, slip stitch under this next stitch, pull that up, and then I will join the next color. So we slip stitch into this stitch to fasten it off, and then the first stitch of our round, I will join the white instead. So um, I'm going to slip my hook in first, so I remember the stitch, take out my stitch marker, and then I'm just going to hook this around here, and we're going to tie this end off to something. Um, in a moment, but I'm just going to hook that around, pull that under the stitch that we're in, and then I'm going to chain one to secure this here. Like that. And then um, we are, where are we? Two single crochet in this one. So I'm going to put the first single crochet and then put my stitch marker in. And now I'm going to take the tiny tail that we just had, which let me shove this starting tail back down in here. I mean, it wasn't, the way I was going to do it the other way wasn't really a huge difference, but. And it would have been fine, but I just figured I'd try to do it properly. And now I'm going to tie these two together to secure both of these ends. Now I don't want to pull this white too, too tight because it'll tighten up what's going on over there. This is just to keep them from coming undone. Shove them in there. Okay. So that was our first single crochet in there. Now I will do the second into the same spot, same stitch, second single crochet. Then single crochet in the next two. So here's our next stitch here. So one, two. Then we're repeating. So two single crochet in the next. One, two, and then two single crochet in the next two. One, two. Okay. I'm just doing a stitch count. And round six, two single crochet in the next single crochet. So here's my first single crochet of the round. We have this little area where we did our um, fasten off and whatever. We're just going to skip over that because it doesn't say not to. And it could be to help the shaping or whatever. I'll work under here to get my first single crochet. This is a fuzzy yarn, this white one. Okay, I had split a loop a little bit, so I fixed that. Stitch marker back. And it wants two in here. So another one in the same. Single crochet in the next two single crochet, so one single crochet in the next, one single crochet in the next, 
two single crochet in the next single crochet. So in this one we're doing two, one, two, single crochet in the next two, one, I split a loop there. See this loop? That doesn't belong there. That belongs there. So this was one, two, one, two. So I'll put my two single crochet back in here. And then two more. This doesn't seem right at all. Two, four, six, eight. Two single crochet in the next single crochet. Single crochet in the next two. Two single crochet in the next single crochet. Single crochet in the next Ooh, that's only seven. We're just not working the stitches every time. I find that to be strange. But again, maybe it's shaping. It's just not saying that you're not working in every stitch of the round. It's just that's annoying to do. Why do that to me? Okay. Anyways, um, that's round six. So seven to 11 single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm gonna, since we're, I'm gonna, should I move my stitch marker? Yeah, I'm gonna move my stitch marker because this is silly. No, I'm not going to. So I'll put a single crochet, where it's just single crochet in each stitch around and it wants 10 of them. So that counts all of these. I am gonna move my stitch marker. You see how well my thinking is working? It's working so very well. This is gonna be the start now. So single crochet in each stitch around. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was seven. So we'll start at eight. I mean, unless this beep is confusing because like I said, it doesn't say that you're not working all the stitches in the round, but you don't even have enough. I still need to trim that stitches in the round to account for the you know, you have five single crochet at the end of three, but you're only working into four single crochet in the next one. And usually if you do something unusual like that where you're not working all the stitches in a row, it tells you. Okay, that was eight, so start nine.
two more, 10 and 11. I'm tempted just to count them out and not use my thing. So I think we're gonna do that. It'll be totally fine. So we're just gonna do 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, Twenty. Anytime I ever try to do this, I always completely forget how to count partway through and totally am like, oh no, I totally messed this up even though I know how to count. All right, anyway, nonsense upon nonsense. Um, where's my box? So yeah. And curve down the seams fine I found this beak situation to be confusing but it looks okay to me so let's fasten off wait did I do enough rounds did I count properly um, if that was round four so five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah okay Everything's fine. Can't you see how well everything is going? Slip stitch in the next. Tighten that down. Tail for sewing. That's probably good enough. Okay. Now, that's the pieces. Um, position eyes between round 9 and 10, 7 stitches between, snap into place, lazily stuff beak, head, and body. Now, it says earlier, with the feet, leaving a tail to make a long stitch between toes. I didn't say to do it then, but I guess we were just were supposed to. Um, although the tail is on the wrong, it's on the opposite end. So I guess we will, but then when you sew them on, oh no, no, it's not on the opposite end. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. So it looks like it wants us to just put a stitch between between these toes so I'm just gonna just to get my um my slip knot there in a better spot I'm just gonna go under that thread right there and then I'm just going to come in through here and come out looks like I, I'll probably do two rows back like right here I'm in between the two layers right now to get in position to do this first one so I'm just gonna come up Come to the same spot on the back and go in and move over inside the thing. Come out, hopefully in about the same spot. One, two. In about the same spot on the other side. So 
about two rows down. Just to give this a more toe-like look. And then up and in through there. Not a big deal. I'm going to come out the side for now. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to run this up to the top through the center so that it's there to sew to the leg. And I suppose to keep myself from over tightening this, I'm going to hold this down here pretty firmly and just put a quick knot up here so that when I pull this tight later, um, it won't over tighten those down there. I will do the same thing to the other leg. Okay, so I got our pieces here. Body, wings, beak, feet, and head. And I want the eyes between rounds 9 and 10 with 7 stitches between. So, let me get the eyes. Alrighty, so from the top, I'm just going to count down to 9 and 10. So this center little circle is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's 9 and here's 10. So I'm just going to, since this is just a circular head, I'm just going to pop this in. And then, well, I'll count the stitches over that way. Pop this in and count the stitches over. So there's one eye. And then it wanted seven stitches between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll put that other eye right in here. Like so. So you just press it through. Okay. I'm just kind of making sure it's pressed all the way through, smoothing it out. Now the backs, these go on with the post going in this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the post over to the opening like this. And there should be a little, usually you hear a little click that it's set on. I want to make sure I'm not getting any of these little threads underneath it though, that it's clear of the edges there. And press it on. And then the second one, I'm going to do the same. Okay. So there are our eyes. Now we are going to stuff things. So I got my stuffing. So beak, head and body. And stuffing is a little bit to your preference. You don't want to overstuff, um, but you do want it to be firm enough. So I just take it out, fluff it up a little. And then you can use, if you feel the need, the hook to help press the stuffing into some of the smaller openings. Um, 
like maybe with the body because it's got that neck to get down. Let's see. Or if your finger's small enough, but you can use the hook as well. And then you just want to stuff them to where they're firm enough. It's a little bit your judgment. So I'm going to stuff these pieces and come back. Stuffed everything. Um, this is about the level I have things stuffed at. I might put a little bit more in the head as I sew it on. Um, oh, there's the beak. So, yeah, you know, I could probably use a little more. And we're going to sew the pieces together. I think I'll start like it has there with the head to the body. It did have us do two tails, but I don't really know why. Which way do we think this wants to go this way? Okay. So I guess I'm gonna get rid of one of these tails because I don't think we need to. I have since misplaced my needle. Where do we think it went? Away from here. I found it. Okay. So this is already tied off. So I'm basically just going to. Tuck this under something down here. Why will it not let me through there? And then just down a little bit just to get it tucked down. And then I'll trim it. Okay, so I'm feeling like the natural inclination of this thing is to go this way. So I'm going to thread this. Now, do we leave the head? Okay, so the body ends in 14 single crochet. And the head ends in 12. So we're not exactly one for one around. So I'm just going to kind of line this up how I want it to be. How do you want it to be? Like that? Okay. Now, here's all I'm going to do. I'm going to come under the loop of this stitch on the bottom like this and out through the top of this one. I'm just using the loops closest to me. And then I'm going to continue doing that around. Sometimes I try to get under the whole stitch. Sometimes I don't. My sewing skills and the assembly part in general is not really where I shine. Now we aren't, I remember. There's less in the head than there are in the body. So here I'm gonna go into the same stitch on the head twice because and then once on the other side of the neck as well I'll do the same thing but other than that I'm just catching a loop of each as I go so 
So like this one again, I'm gonna go into the next stitch here on the body, but I'm gonna go back through the same stitch up at the top. And that should be, now there, now it should be one for one because the two, there was two extra stitches. Make sure I'm pulling tight. I mean, not too, too tight, but I want it to be. Oh, wait, do I want to add more stuffing? Yes, I do. Before you close the neck fully, you should decide whether you want to add more stuffing because sometimes it can be kind of floppy and you'd be surprised how much stuffing you can stuff into the neck at the end. Uh, where's my hook? Okay. It's hard to tell sometimes how much you need in the neck area before you're there. I think maybe a tiny bit more. This might be too much, but we'll see if we can get it all in there. Okay, that seems okay. So I'll finish up these last two. He looks like he's got his head cocked to the side. Maybe he does. Maybe he's curious about something. Okay, so. I'm um, gonna come back down and then just back here I'm just gonna slip under a nearby loop tie this down and then I'm gonna take this end and I'm gonna weave it through a couple of stitches under a couple loops here or there and do it in a way where I not where it's not super visible I'm gonna take it inside and weave it around a little bit more and then I'm just going to take it in and come out of another spot of the body and then I'm going to pull this so that it's scrunched up a little so that when I trim it, it snaps back in to the body. Okay, so wings and beak now, I guess. Um. I guess beak first because I'm scared of doing it. So we got this little curve down going on. And we want it basically just, you know between the eyes. This probably shouldn't be difficult, but I have trouble with things like this. Okay, so I'm gonna try to hold it here. Now before we were sewing the same color, this is a different color, so I'm gonna try to make sure that I place my stitches into the body underneath this row of, underneath the nose basically, the beak area. So, Yeah, I think there is good. We're 
a full row down from the eye. So this, if this was 9 and 10, this would be for basically at 11, 12, 13, and 14. And just trying to center it between there. Alrighty, so I'm going to come under here to start off and just slip under. Can I get it? Yeah, I can get under there. Slip under a stitch. Okay, now I'm going to come under here and come through this loop from the bottom. Make sure we're still okay left and right. Yeah, we're all right. And now that I've got the first one in, I'm gonna go through the top of this one down. I'm doing it a little bit differently just because I think it's a little bit less visible. Then I'm gonna pick a stitch underneath a little loop go through and then I'm going to go up through the next one okay rather than this helps my yarn it's already in the middle of this when it's coming down rather than being outside here and it's not a huge deal and I don't think it matters and you could do it the way I was doing the other one I just think it is a little bit smoother of an attachment. Then I'm going to try to get a loop right under where I'm coming out of and still under the beak in general. And then up the next one. Okay. Uh, it looks like I'm a little far. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that was just how it was sitting for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to continue this around. Down through the front loop of the next stitch. Kind of carefully choose what I want to go around. Then up out of the next one. Okay, yeah, it looks like we'll be all right. I usually have to take pieces out and redo them because I have them, if they, if it's matter, if it matters how they face, I usually get it wrong. Okay. Let me under here. All right, I guess it doesn't want to and I'll have to go under that whole thing, which I didn't want to do, but that's fine. Okay, and last one down. Let's go right here. I want to get under there, there. And then for that one, I'll just go right back up the same one I just came in, came through. And there we go. Now to tie this, I'm going to pop in here and just come out like right underneath the bottom there. And then I'm going to tie to the underside of the beak here. Same way we been doing the whole time. Tighten that up. And then I'm going to weave this in a little bit. Under these stitches here. And then after that, I'm just going to run it through and trim in the same way I did earlier. And there's his beak. So next, I guess we will move to wings. So the wings are on either side. 
it looks like they have the little where's my other wing curl um facing this way so I'll do these just with these curling that way on each side so I'll pay attention to that and then these look like they're just kind of in the middle section sewn to sort of the middle bottom here so I want to get my yarn a little bit over and down so I'm gonna slip into here and come out a little down and over just so that it's closer to where I want to start sewing now I think seeing as how this is the same color on same color I'm just gonna go through I'm gonna sew this on going through both layers I think is what I'm gonna do that seems easier so about there looks good so I have it where it's not quite flush with the front it's a little bit back a couple stitches back from the front and I'm gonna start off by just grabbing something under here and I could kind of painstakingly just grab things from the bottom but since this is like I said, it's the same color. I'm just going to come through both layers there like that. And then I'll go back through both layers. Fold this up. Grab part of a stitch that corresponds to there, like underneath it. And then back through and I'm going to continue this around and I'm going to try to keep these ones short distances you know I don't want to go be reaching far because that'll be more visible so let's see I'm going to slip under a stitch right where that yarn comes out on the other side and then a lot of times I'll, I'm sure I'll end up going back through the same spot like that where I came down and continue doing that around. So basically just moving one spot over on the top where it's visible and just kind of inching my way around. So I'm going to continue this all the way around this like border basically all the way up to here and then I'll be back. Okay so um, I also didn't come all the way to the front sewing this down because I just thought it made sense like that. And now I'm at the back and I'm not gonna sew this all the way down either. I'm gonna stop basically right here which is like kind of the second-ish row down more like the third maybe um just so it's kind of like you know a little wing that is hey that's hanging off the back there so that's how I'm going to do that part and then we'll be back at the beginning basically. <laughs> oh we are back. Okay. So I'm going to take my yarn to the back now that we're back here. Close to where I was working. Lift this up a little so that I can get under here to grab a loop. Tie this off and then I'm going to tuck this in here and then through the body, bring it out on the other side 
and trim it. Now the other wing, I'm going to do the same thing um, that I did, making sure that my little feathers are curled out the right direction. And I'm really just going to kind of go by eye and hope for the best as far as placement. And so I'm going to sew this on the same way and I'll be back. Okay, so both wings are on. They look okay. Now the legs and feet. I just realized their feet in this look like they're standing up, but on the box they're not. Okay, so. We're really just sewing these on. Looks like they attach to the lower front. On here, it kind of looks like they're sewn on like flat like this. But on the box, it definitely looks more like they're sewn on like this. And I think I'm gonna do it this way because he's meant to be sitting. So, top. top okay so I'm just gonna kind of flatten this out a little bit and center it touching the edge of the close to the edge of the wing I guess like that when looks like we're really on the second touching the second row on the bottom there So I'm going to sew this on pretty much the same way I did the wing, where I'm just going to go through both layers. There. So do you still look reasonable? I guess so. Okay, move over one, come through both sides. wonder if this is going to be too far over. No, I think that's going to be okay. Let's see, I want to get one more right into there, basically. To encourage it to... Sit nicely. I'm not going to tie this off for now because I might end up changing it. If I don't like how they look together once they're both on. Try to get this lined up in the same spot. Alrighty, so I'm just going to do the same thing to this one and I'll be back. Okay, so I tied off the ends and wove them in like I did all the other ones. And now we just ha have the um, hair. 
strands. So I'm just going to take these things that I already have. Um, cause it wants four of them and I got four, but you can just cut four three inch lengths. It's not a big deal. And then we're just going to attach these to be fringe on the top. So it looks like they're kind of centered on the top here. So I'm just going to take one of these, bring my hook and go under a spot where I'd like the fringe to go grab the end of this and I can trim this afterwards. Pull that loop through and then grab those two and pull them through like that with four of these. Just going to space them out around this center here. This is not easy to do with this hook. Okay. This one is too big anyway. Okay. No. Alrighty. Okay. And now that those are in, this kit seemed really fast. I guess it was kind of fast. We'll just trim these to, they look like they're about that long. And then just kind of pull these apart a little to fray them. You can do this with the needle as well, actually. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Like this. Kind of like that. Okay, and there we go. So this is petals, although maybe because of up, I feel like it should be Kevin. Um, but here is the flamingo. I don't think that turned out too badly. So uh, hopefully this helps. I hadn't done one of these in a while been busy I feel like I rushed this a little bit but hopefully I didn't rush it as much as I think I did um and that this video makes any sense whatsoever and then next I have a bunch of other uh stitch one star wars one um other stuff anyways hope this is helpful and uh see you next time